making your own presets can actually save you time and it can also make you money. What is up guys, Tyler Casey here. And today I'm gonna walk you through on how I made this preset pack in Adobe Premiere. I'm gonna walk you through A to Z on how I made this preset pack, some tips and tricks along the way because I messed up and I had to completely remake it from scratch at least two times. So I'm gonna help you save some time Making your own presets can be very beneficial because if you're constantly keyframing something and using this effect all the time, you might as well make your own preset so it'll help save you time in the long run and you could just drag that onto your clip, adjustment layer, or nested sequence and you're good to go. You can also bundle these up and you can actually sell them on your own site so it can actually be lucrative and it can help other people out as well. I'm gonna teach you how to do this in this video. If you guys wanna check out my preset pack that I made, I'm gonna link that down below. Let's hop into Adobe Premiere, let's make some presets, and let's get this bread. Okay, cool, we're in Adobe Premiere, and if we come over to Effects, we're gonna see our preset folder right here. So once you're done with this, you're actually gonna have your own presets within this folder. So what I would recommend is making your own folder. I would right click and click New P Preset Bin, and you would name this whatever you want. It, um, I'm gonna name it Tyler's Super Fire Presets. Sick. So to make a preset, you're gonna have to use some type of effect. And typically these are keyframes. So you would stack a bunch of effects to get a desired effect that you want and you would use keyframes. There's a couple tips and tricks in there, like I said, and I'm gonna show you those. So let's go ahead, let's grab HLS and we're gonna hit this keyframe right here. And let's say we want it to spin all the way. And then let's say we want it to go back down to zero. So let's play that through. And we need a crazy RGB, right? So then pretty much all you have to do is right click, save preset. You wanna go ahead and give that a name. I'm gonna name this RGB cycle. If you want them organized, you can also do this numerically. So you can put one period RGB cycle too, so then they go in the order that you want them. So there's a couple things, so this is where I messed up, guys. We have scale, anchor in, and anchor out. So what scale is gonna basically do, if you drag this onto a clip that's a different size, it's gonna stretch those keyframes out. So if you drag this onto a clip with different size, so let's say this one's about one second long, let's say I put it on a 20 second long clip, it's gonna stretch all those keyframes out. It's gonna be different for every clip. Unless if you're putting this on the exact same length clip every time, the keyframes are gonna be different. If we do anchor to endpoint, your keyframes are basically gonna start at the beginning of your clip and it does not matter the length of your clip. Same with out. So if it's an outro type effect, like if it's an out transition or something like that, we would put anchor to out point. I'm gonna do scale and I'm gonna show you what this actually looks like. So now if we come over, if we hit X, we have RGB cycle. I'm gonna go ahead and put that in Tyler's super fire presets. And so if I drag this on this clip, you're gonna see, watch how much slower this goes. So I go ahead and play this, and it's cycling through everything a lot slower, which is cool, it's a nice preset to have, and if you like that, that totally works. But if we play, so like let's say I delete what I did here, and I go ahead and drag on RGB cycle, play that through, it's a lot faster. So let's say I save this, and let's say I name it two RGB cycle in. And let's say we do anchor to endpoint. Let's go ahead and delete that. Let's go ahead and drag in number two. Let's put it back in my folder. You know, we're building my preset pack here. And let's go ahead and play that through. And now we have it super quick. You can see the difference between anchor in and scale. Let's go ahead and check out anchor out just so you guys can see. So if I save this, let's go anchor to out point and I'll name this three RGB cycle out. Let's go ahead and put it in my preset pack. This is not my actual preset pack by the way. Mine's a lot better. I'll show you guys a little bit of that later uh, i spent a lot of time on mine and i figured most of this stuff out so if we wanted to put it to anchor to out point we would go ahead and move that to the very end so it would work then i would click save and then i would put anchor out so now if we go ahead and drag that on a few clips we're going to see it ends up at the very end of every clip even this shorter clip or let's say it's like a random size it's not the same size 
Let's go ahead and delete number one. Let's go ahead and put cycle out on there. And we're gonna see that it goes to the very end of the clip. So it stays where you want it to. So scale can definitely be useful if you want it to adapt and change to your type of scene. But if you want it to look exactly the same, I definitely recommend you using in or out depending on where you want the effect to occur. So let's dive in a little bit more and show you some other things that you can do with presets. So pretty much anything you can keyframe in Adobe Premiere, you can create a preset out of. Let's say you wanted to make an adjustment layer transition pack. So basically what I would do is I would count how many frames I would want the transitions to be. So this is about 20 frames right here. Go ahead and delete that. And then I would go over to effects and I would basically just make as many transitions as I could using all the effects in Adobe Premiere. So you could definitely like, let's take a look. We could do, let's maybe play around with offset, right? So let's go shift center. We'll start at the beginning and here's our transition. Let's offset this a lot and let's maybe even use the Bezier curve. So we'll go there and then we'll reset it back to zero. How about that? So it's going to go. So we'll go ahead and add transform right here. And then I'm going to go ahead and enable some motion blur and then let's go ahead and add scale position. So I would shake it around a little bit, get some motion blur going and then So you can see when we get some movement, the motion blur actually looks pretty good. I would zoom in right there. And let's say we like that. Let's say we want to add one more effect. Let's maybe add a flicker. So I'm going to come over to levels. So I'm going to come over to my adjustment layer. I'm going to grab on levels. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to keyframe this white level. I'm going to use my arrow keys here. I'm going to move forward a few frames, bring up the brightness, bring it down. Bring it back up, bring it down, bring it maybe really bright when we transition and then we'll come back down, flicker it a few more times and then we'll come back down to a uh, reset value. So we'll go ahead and play that transition through now. So I mean that looks cool. Um, I think it's actually cutting to the same clip. Let's go ahead and I don't think I'm actually this is an actual footage. So let's say we're cutting this airplane clip. Yeah, I think it works. So what we would want to do now is basically I would select all these, make sure you select them in order. I would click save preset and I'm going to go ahead and name this. I'm going to name this crazy transition one. And then I think we did 20 frames. So I'm going to put in quotations 20 frames. So we can even do so we can do anchor in and anchor out or we could do scale. If we do scale and they put it on a shorter adjustment layer or a longer adjustment layer, it will actually react to that and then it'll make the transition longer. So I'm going to do scale. It could just be a recommendation. So if I go ahead and delete those. So let's see if that works. I'm going to go ahead and look at my presets. Crazy transition, 20 frames. Go ahead and play that. Boom, works super easy, right? But let's say I have a longer, that's like over like 30 frames right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag this on and it starts a little bit longer. It's a little bit slower, but it works. So scale is definitely useful. It's important to know when and when not to use that. That's pretty much the basics of creating presets. I'm gonna dive into, I'm gonna show you a little bit of my presets right here. So the way mine work is I basically, for the transitions, I recommend doing 10 frames. So that's what I created them. The quickest way is either use an adjustment layer or just nest those two clips. And then I'll show you a couple of mine. So let's go into the Cinepax preset effects. And I have some, these ones are really cool. So here's like a shake and flash, really cool. She's got some really subtle stuff to it. And there's a bunch of other presets. And there's actually, you can actually build your own transitions in my pack. So you can use blur and you can drag on any of these transforms. And then you can even add some flashes and you can make your own transitions using our using our presets. If you want to check out our preset pack, I price it super cheap. It's 
down in the link in the description. I hope you guys found this useful. It's, I think it's really cool to make your own presets if you're editing all the time and you can share some of your tips and tricks with other people. You can definitely make some money off this if, if you have some really good tips and tricks for other people and they find it valuable. So go out there, make your own presets, save yourself some time. If you guys found this helpful at all, please subscribe to my channel. Really would mean a lot to me. I'm Tyler Casey with Cinepax. I'll catch you guys next time. Thanks for watching.